Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money Plan. So this one, as Kirby said before, we never tell each other the topics beforehand. But so I got one. So and mostly because I I had a quite a bit of experience and still having experience with uh this project. This one has probably been the most enduring or most I don't know how to word it, but most occupied of my time. So what is the, what, like, just, just some fun stories. What is the craziest project or the craziest trip you had real estate related? Oh, we, we, we know, we, we know the stories of, you know, the house burning down and all of that, but like just, just road trip related or project related trying to rehab or something. Right. Well, for me, the road trips didn't start till I moved to I pivoted out of Florida and started investing in Georgia. Before I pivoted, uh, when I was in Florida, my road trips was uh, rare. I mean, besides, you know, the road trip up to, you know, going north to the Ocala area. You know, we talked about the property burning down, going back and forth, you know, picking out the stuff so the contractors can do that. That was probably my biggest project because that was about four hundred and like eighty thousand dollars. That was my biggest project of rehab. That's what that one was. Um, but just craziest trips, I think, because I, I I I'm more of a hands off a hands off investor, meaning I buy properties and then I just put teams in place and then you just call me when there's a problem kind of guy. Um, but just the trip in general was uh, Oklahoma. When I was uh trying to start in Oklahoma, so I see I see a property listed in Oklahoma, and then if I wasn't just gonna fly out there blindly because you know I didn't I didn't know the market. I'm trying to get a feel for everything, and then so I called I called the real estate agent, the listing agent, because that's who I always call listing agent. I called the listing agent to tell them I was interested, and then the listing agent I called, then I text, and then the listing agent texts back and said, and I gave her my name. And then I said, hey, I'm interested in the property. She replies back and says, I looked up your name. You don't exist. You don't own any assets. So as soon as she's doing that, I call. And then she busts out laughing. And then I was like, no, I'm a real person. Because, you know, people, real estate agents and then investors, we get calls all the time. Somebody saying they want to buy the property. Somebody saying they're interested in the property, yada, yada, yada. So I called and we had the conversation. And then we start talking about the property. I gave, and this was 2021, 2022. This was mostly when people were doing sight unseen. So uh, we talked about the property for about an hour. And uh, and then she was just telling me that this property was already under contract, but the, the person under the contract wanted just a lot of stuff that just didn't make sense. And then I just replied to the selling agent. I said, if the seller would give me that same price, uh, my contingencies won't be that steep. And then so she said, okay, I'll let them know. And then I said, okay, I'm on my way to fly out there. So I booked the trip to fly out there. I'm on the plane. I'm on the plane. I already got a couple more properties lined up. And But my hallmark, the one I went through the most was talking to that agent. So I'm on the plane headed to Oklahoma. I was headed to Tulsa, Oklahoma at the time, but the property was not in Tulsa. But I'm in Tulsa. I'm headed to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm on the plane about to take off. She calls me back and says... The owner of the property don't believe you're real. I'm like, I'm like, what are we going through this again? And then she's like, yeah, he don't believe you're real. I was like, well, no matter what, I'm still headed to Oklahoma. So, you know, I'm going to go check out these other properties and then we'll just leave it at that. I wasn't going to sit here and keep trying to prove to people that I was actually a person. It was just they didn't they didn't get so many. They didn't get out of town investors a lot where they was at. And then so I go I go to uh, Tulsa whole bunch of crap properties. Uh, I'm there. I end up finding the casino, just losing money in the casino because the properties in Tulsa was crap also. And then it was funny, like, right, it was about six hours before I'm about to leave. And then this agent calls back again. And then she, she was like, hey, did you ever make it? I was like, yeah, but I just figured I wasn't going to bother y'all since y'all didn't believe I was a real person. And then I said, how about this? How about we do a walkthrough I said, I'm about to fly back to Florida. Why don't we do a virtual walkthrough when I get there? And then and then we'll go from there. And then sure enough, I flew back to Florida. 
two o'clock in the afternoon. We did a virtual walkthrough. It was about two hours because I combed over every bit and piece of it. And then we ended up closing on the deal. And actually, with the same agent, I closed on a couple more deals since then. But it was just crazy that they just didn't think a real person would call and ask to buy a property. Because I guess that part of the state just wasn't getting a lot of out-of-town investors at the time. That Yeah, and that, that story, it shows, I hope it shows the viewers, like, in real estate, especially with this project, because the the last couple that I did, and pro by project, I just mean the deal of closing on the property and everything. The last couple went pretty smooth. This was the most out of whack deal I ever did. And I hope that shows the viewers, like, not everything is going to work out perfectly. Because, like, I mean, I can only imagine for a new investor getting on a plane, booking a flight to go check out a property they think they're that they're going to get. And then them saying, oh, sorry, you know, we don't think you're real. Like, you know, how would a new investor take that? But it's just right. a matter of finding a way to still work through it. Like you said, you said, well, how about we do a video walkthrough? But you came up with the idea. It wasn't like the realtor was holding your hand saying, hey, let's do this. You had to decide how sure. you go about it to get the property. And it's the same thing. Like, and, and, Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. But no, but every... Every time I leave the house, when I'm going on a real estate deal, I, I might be going for one purpose, i.e., let's say I'm headed up to Georgia to close on a property. I always have contingencies while I'm there. Like, So what I mean by that is, so let's say I'm already thinking, what if I'm going doesn't come to fruition? What else am I going to do? I don't just go for one thing. So case in point, like when... uh. When I was up there a couple of weeks ago, I went there and I seen your place. I went and seen a couple of my places, but then I also went to see other other listings that was out there available. So I'm always going with a contingency because I don't want to, because of course I hate driving. I'm not like Alex. I'm not turning back around and driving back. That's not happening. So I always put four or five things on my to-do list while I'm there. I like I won't fly to Oklahoma to say, hey, I just want to get eyes on the property. If I'm getting eyes on this property, I'm damn sure about to get eyes on uh, five or six more potential properties that I'm interested in just to get eyes on, check out the neighborhoods, check out the areas and things of that nature. So in case I run into another situation where, hey, a listing comes online or uh, somebody called me on an off market deal and they tell me about an area, I already know what the area is instead of just flying blind or a guy said, oh, let me hurry up and get a plane ticket so I can go and see what the area is like and it delay and hold up the deal. So I'm always looking at contingencies. I'm always looking at fallbacks. But I'm never just going one place just for one thing. That's that's not exactly. Yeah, and I mean to that point to give some background to the viewers on, you know, what kind of things can happen. Uh, it's funny how you say like they called you while you were on the plane because it reminded me of the day of closing on this duplex. It's it was eleven forty five. We closed at twelve. The realtor called me and said, "Hey, the lender called. We can't close because one of the the units is missing a stove." I mean, fifteen minutes from closing, and so the realtor had to work out to get someone to put a stove in, get photos taken, appraiser sent back, and it's just crazy the, the the kind of stuff that can happen. And as an investor, you have to just know how to navigate it and still work to get the deal closed because. If the deal is right, then you have to do everything you need to do in order to, to get it. But I was just wondering what kind of stories you had, because you've always got, you know, different kinds of stories as far as you always got the crazy stories, too. I mean, a burned out <laughs> property that is a burned out fourplex. That is something I. Uh, yeah. I uh, hopefully you never had to go through it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope not. I hope not. But all right. but with all that being said, guys, if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know down below. Hit this like button, uh, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next one.